the rest of the staff of uh, Jagat Guru Nanak Dev University. Thank you very much. Thank you, Amu, Ami Ma'am. It was a pleasure to have listened to you, Ma'am. Uh, certainly, ODL is going to make changes in the uh, entire uh, educational landscape of India. And uh, achieving DER 50% can only be possible, made possible with the help of open and distance learning. Certainly, ma'am. And uh, we'll try uh, to bring that positive change that you've all been talking about in uh, your lecture, ma'am. We'll try to empower our students. We'll try to invest our intellectual capital to make them uh, proficient and uh, capable enough of carrying out the task and carrying out the assignments and do their uh, course works in an uh, effective manner, ma'am. Thank you so much, Ami ma'am. It was a pleasure to have you here despite having such a hectic schedule. You managed to uh, take out time for us. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Ami ma'am. Thank you. Uh, certainly, as ma'am mentioned, that open and distance education learning is uh, gaining momentum in Indian higher education system as well, though it is not as accepted as it, as it should have been uh, by the masses and of course by the policy makers and other educationists and academicians too, uh, especially owing to its special features of providing greater flexibility, economic viability and innovative methods of imparting education. Uh, it tries to fit study around, uh, uh, around your life. It, uh, tries to provide expert tutor support at every step of your journey of learning. So to know more about how it opens up new vistas of opportunity for the learners, how it helps them integrate into the larger global workforce, let us invite our next speaker, Dr. Ravi Mahajindi, former professor and coordinator, Department of Statistics, University School of Open Learning, Punjab University, Chandigarh. Besides being a member of various professional committees and societies, Dr. Mahajan has four books and over 50 publications in the journals of international hey, thank you. repute. Thank you. To his credit, thank known you. for introducing innovative teaching methodologies in Punjab University's distance education department, as mentioned by Dr. Ami as well. He disseminates his ideas at various national and international offline and online platforms. So I'd like to invite Dr. Ravi Mahajanji. Sir, thank you so much for uh, being with us. And the stage is all yours now. Dr. Thank Ravi Mahajanji. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think uh, when Professor Ami has already uh, discussed this topic at length and she has covered up almost all the dimensions of the system and uh, she took over from where Professor Karamjit with his vision has talked about, uh, my talk becomes virtually redundant. But since I have to be there, so I'll be talking about uh, in my own way. So I think uh, when I start my slideshow, uh, you will find uh, certain thought processes are already taken care of, but it can be a good reminder as well. So let me start with that, uh, if I'm allowed. And, uh, sorry, where it is? Uh, let me find out. Yeah, this is there. So please uh, confirm that you are able to see this. Uh, yes, sir. We can see the presentation, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so. Uh, so here we go with the five, where is that uh, slideshow? Yeah, this is here. Hello dear, come on. So this is uh, what we have is, uh, just for a minute. Yeah. So now we can see it from the full screen, huh, Naji? This is uh, what we are privileged to be here and the topic is there. Uh, my experience is that slide shows, they help in conveying your thoughts when you are online. So I prefer always uh, using this. Well, whenever I start, I always pay my rich tributes to the place where I have spent more than four decades. I have been in this place from 77 to 2020. So I always respect my place because whatever I have done, I am at this platform of um, 
years because I worked, I made some uh, contributions in the system, in the distance education, and this is my Karambhumi, which has given me everything. And I always re request all the participants, particularly the youngers, that always respect the place which gives you to earn, which gives you an opportunity to make your name or fame, whatever it is. So here we are, and I am grateful to Professor Karamjit Singh Ji, the dynamic, the visionary vice chancellor, and who is born lucky to be the founder vice chancellor. You know, to be a founder of any institute is a once in a life, which is a rare event in the life of so many human beings. So I'm very happy that uh, Professor Karamjit with his dynamism has taken over, and I'm sure the university is going to grow like anything. Thank you, Dr. Amiji, for being here. And since you have to go, uh, it's fine. You're busy, lady. And then Professor Mohabatra ji, we probably last time we met at the ICD conference 20, uh, 2010. And I, this is what I faintly remember. And thereafter, I don't know whether we met or not. But it is great to be seeing you over there and I'm equally delighted to see Dr. Gill over here. It's a good team. Keep it up, madam. Well, the topic is again empowering higher education through distance education. We are talking about this topic. And uh, when we Google it out, you know, uh, about this, there are nine crore entries when we see empowering higher education through open and distance education. There are nine crore entries if we Google it out. It's a tremendous information is there. But the moment you narrow down the topic, you be precise in your search, there is no entry. Means you cannot find any entry on this topic. I remember when Professor Karunjit was talking about this webinar, I proposed him something different, but he said, no, let's have on this. So this is a topic which is uh, having no direct reference in the precise terms in the Google itself. Well, you know, in this topic, there are four keywords. One is empowering, the other is higher education, and then there is a through. Why through? This is important. You know, why through? Why not without? Why through? Why not without ODE, open and distance education? You know, this topic becomes even more challenging when you talk about empowering higher education. Without ODE, this needs to be thought about. Why we are saying through and why we are not saying without? So I'm sure during the course of this uh, webinar, we'll be convinced why it is true and why it is not without. Well, coming back to this original, empowering, yes, we get the word that empowering means given space. But point is that if you Google, you find that empowering means giving something power or authority to do something, to do something. It is empowering someone to achieve something that they, we are empowering, we are giving you the power to achieve something. And when it comes to the higher education, what are we are trying to achieve? Means we have to live with the role of the higher education. And once it comes to the role of higher education, it becomes again a tedious task. You know, it is full. The literature is full. The entries are more than four crore entries, around five crore entries, talking about the role of higher education. But to make it simple, I say that when we talk about higher education, we have to talk about empowering teachers, empowering students. So we have to see from that context. So what is student? To see students' role in the higher education, we have to go back, we have to trace their learning or the educational progression. The first teacher, we know for everybody, it is the mother. Whatever mother says, that is the final. Mother says, he is your father, then he is your father. The first lesson, we never challenge it. We never challenge our mother on any count. But the moment he steps into the school, the teacher becomes the final authority. We have experienced that, I'm sure all of us, all of you must have already experienced this, that when a kid comes from this primary school, he will fight back. No, my teacher says like this, so this is the final. So at point, one point of time, teacher becomes the final. Here we go. Then teacher is challenged with the books. No, the book is saying something like this. Teacher is challenged with the, uh, with the knowledge which is available in the books. This is how we grow towards higher education. And then comes a scene where we are given to compare the books. You know, that book says something like this. This book says something like this. And that starts the process where we are dealing with the students in the higher education forum. 
and then comes the synthesis part of it what should be there what should be the outcome so that synthesis is the overall objective of empowering our students they have to be made comfortable in growing and growing with the subject and the subject well on the part of teachers what do we say about the teachers well role of teachers again we have around 5 lakh entries so role of teacher is very well defined i'm not going to go by that what is the role of teacher for me the role of teacher was de decided for me decided for me was by this gentleman professor j n joshi those who have who know it from the education uh, who have the background in education they must have heard this name professor j n joshi and let me remind you that professor j n joshi had make made a great contribution in the growth of open and distance education in india but it was in the backdrop and just a footnote on that i'm sure i'm not crossing the time limit i shall not be the first authentic research in the contact programs was undertaken under his chairmanship professor jain joshi was the chairman when we were talking about the role and importance and the problems in the personal contact program that's what we said and this was an extensive study which was undertaken by his uh, under his chairmanship and i was there as a statistician so we interacted we we were very close to it and this study the outcome of these studies were Uh, refer to in almost all the researches all the phd thesis which were there uh, in the 80s i am reminded of uh, sahu then uh, even sandosh panda they also they also refer to all these studies they were there well what professor uh, joshi said was that higher education the teachers are not there to teach you know this was a statement which he made in the 1979 we had a summer school on education technology in the um jab university and uh, professor joshi was addressing that he said that teachers in the higher education they are not to teach it looks so fantastic i was a fresher i had spent only 20 months in the education system and i got the vibes oh we are not here to teach then what for we are that was a even very dangerous sentence for me that they are there to inspire the students to grow and the grow the subject oh my goodness to inspire the students who can inspire not tom dick and harry can inspire only those persons can inspire who have the rich background about the subject about the current developments in the subject and at least have some little bit of vision about how this subject is going to grow so that is the role of teachers but where do we end up we end up with the interaction that we should have a nice interaction between students and the teachers but can we have the interaction like this when there is one teacher and number of students are there number of students are there i'm sure you are reminded of the classroom situation how we can have the interaction it is one way communication that is prevailing all through because there are inherent groups some are good learners some learn, they have learning pace is different their background is different so there are heterogeneity in the homogeneous what you call as the homogeneous groups and then in that situation we are also aware of the quality i'm not saying quality of the teachers i'm saying there is variation inherent variation in the teachers some are good teachers some are very good teachers some are excellent teachers some are very very excellent and then there are number of excellent teachers but even then two excellent teachers may not be equal let us be very clear because every teacher has his different aptitude some are shila dharmi we call them and some are akash dharmi teachers no two teachers are alike and then there are teachers who are researchers who are good communicators then there are teachers who have different variations in their accent i'm sure you are able to find out the behavior pattern of the teachers is different so one student or a group of students they will be inspired by the same level it is not possible so inherent variations heterogeneity in the groups that creates gap in our what is called the requirement of to inspire and to add to that is the changing complexion of the student body you know of late it is not only that you learn and earn now the scene has changed drastically over the last two three decades it is learn while you earn or earning and learning they are going together more and more adult people are coming into the scene and then there is another problem uh, issue which is coming up autonomy which is called space you know, by dr emi students want to understand 
uh, or learn at their own pace and place. I've seen in the formal system nowadays students even control the the setup of the examination when this exam is to be taken care of. Are you getting the point? This is the level of autonomy about which student population is getting uh, control. And then of course, this is the choice based credit system is simple manifestation of the autonomy that we are going to talk about. This autonomy is prevailing day in and day out. But are we able to achieve is our education system is able to achieve this? This is a million dollar question, which we'll be answering without and through open and distance education. Scene cut. Let's talk about the Corona scene. What happened during the Corona? We know all the systems got standstill and suddenly online systems were there for asking. What happened during the online system? Everybody started in after initial hesitation, conferences were held. Conferences were initially avoided, then everybody started enjoying the conferences. And in, seven, in, in August, after experiencing two or three conferences, I just jotted down my thoughts into a paper and it was there in the lifestyle. It says that conferences, why online conferences have become more professional. Now we are not wasting time in traveling or moving around. We convey our message to the masses. Now a person has not to be selecting that only 10% will be participating in this conference or in this workshop or something like that. So we have opened up. So there are a list of advantages. And then it was the virtual classrooms into the scene. So that is how we had it. Then people from IITs, people from Iganau, this is my friend's photograph, uh, Pradeep Sunny. And then uh, they, they were all moving around. This is uh, um, Professor Somesh and uh, Professor Shalab. They are doing wonderful for the uh, strengthening the uh, uh, component of statistics on the swim portal. Well, so we learned a lot many lessons during the course of this Corona crisis. The lesson was that if we want to satisfy the student, if we want to make our teaching learning effective, then lessons should be properly material. The proper material should reach the students. It should be giving link for the videos, and then we can have a live interaction. Now, this live interaction through virtual mood is again very impressive. The classroom teaching, if we follow the same te technique, teaching learning process becomes more effective because we know the inherent variations are taken care of, and then the final version. So, lesson learned during the Corona period by the formal the, the faculty in the formal system was a kind what what we have in the uh, system of open and distance education. So this was the distance education that we were talking about. What is the distance education? It talks about the same. And the best part is it has optimized the education system. Optimization means it flows from the core of that resource sharing. About resource sharing. When it was open in a correspondence courses, even then you and cry was made about it. Let us share the resources, let us share the resources. But it was not taken care of. Now with so many portals online going, everybody is talking about resource sharing. The moment I'm talking about this, I'm addressing this platform, n number of person can join. Those who are interested can have it. So open and distance education, surely it is not something new. We have the example of Ekabilabaya. So we have the, these number of instances which are quoted for the open and uh, distance education. Of course, we had a lot many terminologies which were there already in the asking. And these terminologies uh, eventually saw in the 20th century. And this 20th century in this new century, we have these three terms coming to the boon of this, what is called the open and distance education. They are not nothing new. If I'm given to dwell on it, they are not nothing new. Open course where MOOCs and oh yeah, they're all, they are all offsprings or they are all subset in the frame of open and distance education. Those of you who are interested, they can have this uh, more details on this in this documentary, which is available on the uh, YouTube. And uh, then those who are interested in the precise understanding about how the different events took place in, in, in the 21st century. This is a book about which the my, uh, I think, this is my ultimate contribution uh, where the events over the 20th century have been compiled. And I was uh, immensely happy that uh, Dr. Michael Moore, the theorist, the living legend, the only person who is said to be the, um, who has been certified as the original thinker in distance educators uh, has given the foreword for this. Anyway, coming back to the original, what happened before the Corona scene? The education system was divided between the two streams, face-to-face -face learning 
and the correspondence or open or open end distance education so they were all as uh, dr ami has also mentioned that there were two points and they were always in conflict but the moment we had this corona scene come in swim portal became very important swim become very important you know the difference between swim and the face to face is that swim and open and distance so they are whatever is taught is in the public domain whereas in the face to face teaching nothing was in the public domain so there was a limitation and there were advantages of this but the point is in the swim teachers from the face to face learning they started in, uh, participating that was the success of our system so in the end let's say that after the uh, this um, um corona field we have the society has at lar uh, at large realized the importance of uh, having a teaching process where physical proximity of a teacher is not required and now believe me after that even many teachers i have met they say it is very convenient to take class you can take class any time and student those who are interested they can contact him any time so education has become more effective i'll say because education is wasted by those who are just taking it for the by the way education there are number of persons who take go to higher education by the way as a stop gap arrangement but those who are interested generally interested they get into the stream so that is the message we have got from the um, what is called post corona or ongoing corona process three stage is over but the challenges will continue because teachers variation that will be there and see in in the reporter says if some teacher is residing somewhere in the remotest part of the world why his expertise should not be available to the rest of the world so that challenge will remain there so answer is again in ode if there is a person student who is residing in remote why he should be denied the best of the teacher he can have it answer is ode student complexion body is changing it is a continuous process again the answer is ode autonomy of the student is to be respected because it is essential for his growth so again the answer is ode choice board currency system as dr ami said it is only possible only possible we have seen over the last one decade we have been asking for choice based credit system we were not able to do as the formal system but we have done it and we will be able to do it when we follow the stream of ode so empowering higher education through what we is ultimate ultimate solution for the higher education because the pyramid is inverted there was one teacher lot many students now there are so many professionals who are joining head to respect the importance of one student this is what we call as the learning centric system thank you very much and i am sure i have conveyed some message and any i'd be happy to have some discussion if there is any and i think i could finish it within the stipulated time thank you very much Thank you, Ravi sir. Thank you so much for the wonderful, wonderful presentation. Uh, certainly, we agree with you that open and distance education answers all the challenges and questions that uh, the current higher education system is grappling with, sir. And uh, thank you so much for introducing uh, Professor G N Joshi to us and for highlighting the differences between the uh, current education system and the ODA system that has to offer. thank you so much we'll try to make the optimum use of the resources that we will have here uh, in our university sir and uh, sir uh, as we just got to know that about your contribution uh, in the field of odi especially in the form of book so it will be a pleasure for us to have an access to that book and we'll certainly follow your book to make uh, our students empowered through uh, ode sir thank you ravi sir thank you so much for being with us uh, now moving ahead uh, dr shrikant mohapatra ji the director regional services division and electronic media production center ignu new delhi is a wonderful scholar he as dr ami also mentioned in her speech uh, being the founder vice chancellor of orisha state open university sambalpur uh, orisha he took many initiatives to take quality education to the underprivileged and the marginalized strata of the society in the state in order to transform them into valuable 
and skillful human resources. <laughs> In tandem to his administrative positions, he has earned a lot of fame as a professor of political science. He's a scholar par excellence whose research work is appreciated and published widely by many reputed journals and periodicals. Sir, we'll love to listen to you. <laughs> pretty sure it will be an enriching and enlightening experience for us. Dr. Srikant Mahapatra ji, so please. Namaskar, thank you very much uh, for this uh, uh, introduction. In fact, uh, I am a practitioner of open and distance learning. So whatever I'll say, I'll say it from my own experience of almost 30 years in open and distance learning. But let me at the outset, uh, thank uh, my esteemed friend and the Honorable Vice Chancellor of Punjab State Open University, Professor Karamjit Singh Ji, for remembering me always and inviting me to this very uh, prestigious uh, seminar, national seminar. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Professor Anita uh, Gill, Madam, uh, the Dean of Academics, in the university, our very distinguished uh, panelists, uh, Professor Ravi Mahajan and uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor of uh, Baba Sahib Ambedkar Open University in uh, Ahmedabad, Professor Rami Upadhyay, Madam, and uh, the organizer, Dr. Gurlin, uh, Madam, uh, and the distinguished participants. Uh, I have already listened to two distinguished speakers along with the Vice Chancellor uh, of Punjab uh, State Open University. Uh, they have already touched upon uh, most of the uh, points uh, which I just wanted to share with you. Uh, I'll, I'll share a few other things uh, which uh, are just coming to my mind. Uh, when we talk about empowering higher education uh, through open and distance learning, uh, I will first talk about open and distance learning. And all of us know that open and distance learning is uh, at, in India. You can say that uh, it has uh, started uh, with Delhi University uh, in 1962 when not even an open university was there in the country. The first open university was in uh, Hyderabad and then IGNU in 1985. So in the 80s, we have these open universities in the country. But in the 60s, we have open and distance learning in India offered by the regular universities, offered by the conventional universities like Delhi University. And in my own state also, Utkal University, which comes among uh, the first 15 universities in the country, they also started a uh, first evening college in 1962. And then in 1974, the uh, correspondence, Center for Correspondence Education was started. And similarly, many other uh, good universities, reputed universities in the country are offering uh, open and distance learning courses uh, much before the open university system was introduced in the country. So therefore, when we talk about empowering higher education through open and distance learning, we should be very clear that uh, open and distance learning is a methodology. It's not a monopoly of open universities only. The regular universities, the dual mode universities in the country are offering uh, courses, programs, in ODL system much before the establishment of open universities. Take the example of Delhi University. I have been observing Delhi University for last so many years. And what I see is that the number of applicants for different undergraduate programs in Delhi University and the number of seats available in the regular colleges, constituent and affiliated colleges under Delhi University, there is a mismatch. And the mismatch is being filled up by the School of Open Learning, which is a part of Delhi University. Say, for instance, 250,000 students every year apply to Delhi University for admission, 
roughly around uh, less than uh, 1 lakh students take admission as regular students and the rest of the students they go for open and distance learning system either under the school of open and distance learning under delhi university or to the indira gandhi national open university so both regular mode of teaching and open and distance learning mode of teaching are running parallel and are running simultaneously and sometimes also there is a convergence between regular method of teaching and open method of teaching the best conver convergence i would see for the first time in the national education policy 2020 because national education Pol policy 2020 says that there will be there are two important things which are uh, mentioned there one is that the definition of a university they say that there are so many types of universities which are imparting higher education in the country we call them as state funded university we call them as private university we call them as private university deemed to be universities open universities technical universities law universities they say that no there has to be only one definition of an university and that definition is it is a multidisciplinary higher educational institution offering academic programs and research programs through regular mode distance learning mode and online mode so there will be only one definition of an university for imparting higher education through multidisciplinary approach uh, either through regular mode or through distance mode or through uh, online mode so this is this is the best convergence that has uh, uh, that one can ever imagine for higher education in the country now when we talk about open and distance learning you see there are many many positive aspects of open distance learning and there are also few concerns about open and distance learning in the country what are those positive aspects access to higher education affordability of higher education equity in higher education flexibility in higher education i would call as four parameters of open and distance learning four pillars on which open and distance learning in this country is best it creates access for the poorer sections of the society for the disadvantaged sections of the society it believes in equity it aims at creating a new educational order in the country by giving equal opportunity to all for higher education it is affordable because it serves in a large scale and it does not require much infrastructure so it charges less fee from the students so poorer sections of the society can have education uh, through open and distance learning and it is flexible what professor ramyu padha and professor mahajan were highlighting in their talks is that it is flexible in terms of time it is flexible in terms of a place it is flexible in terms of uh, pace of your study and flexible in terms of choices of courses that you are uh, interested to learn so these are the positive aspects at the same time there are certain concerns of open and distance learning and these concerns are credibility and quality sometimes people do say that open and distance learning is a second grade education in the country those who do not get access to regular mode of education they come to open and distance learning so the credibility of uh, the open and distance learning method in this country is sometimes being questioned and because the credibility is in question the quality of education imparted through open and distance learning is also being A, a, a is a, a matter of great concern for many of the people and that is the reason why uh, many restrictions are imposed on open and distance learning that you cannot offer technical courses through open and distance learning agriculture programs cannot be offered through open distance learning medical courses cannot be offered through or health related courses cannot be offered through 
uh, distance learning your skill based courses cannot be offered through distance learning law degrees cannot be offered through distance learning so everybody tries to impose certain kind of restrictions on open and distance learning without going deep into the <clears throat> strength of open and distance learning in this country and how open and distance learning is going to complement and supplement or what we call in the seminar as empower higher education that is not being uh, discussed very much we put lot of uh, questions on the credibility of open and distance learning i'm very happy that the state government in punjab has opened a new open university and i was telling my friend uh, professor karamjit that yours is the youngest university because when i joined as the vice chancellor first vice chancellor of orissa state open university uh, my university was the youngest open university uh, punjab became the youngest open university and now i was told that kerala government of kerala is establishing an open university so you will not have that tag of the youngest open university in the country uh, that tag will go now to kerala uh, uh, as the youngest open university in the country so what i am trying to mention uh, through this is that more and more states in the country are going for open and distance learning through specific universities called state open universities which is a positive trend but as soon as the new education policy will be implemented in this country i am pretty sure that uh, maybe Uh, the nomenclature of these universities and the methodology of teaching uh, that is being imparted through these open universities may slightly change over a period of time that that is something which is to be seen in future but all said and done open university system in this country has established itself and igno has taken the leadership when uh, i completed my term Uh, with uh, Odisha State Open University as the founder vice chancellor, I came back to Igno, and uh, I have I am holding two positions. One is director Electronic Media Production Center, and other is director Regional Services Division. Now I'll just give you a glimpse of how flexible the system is, and what is the dimension of the work that an open university is supposed to do. I have been. given the charge of the igno armed forces project now what is that igno armed forces education project under this project igno is imparting education to the indian army all the personnel 12 lakh people who are in the ranks of the indian armed forces are being trained for their higher education that responsibility is given to igno similarly in case of navy we have the mandate to provide education to the naval forces in case of assam rifles who are guarding our borders as a paramilitary force we are providing education uh, to the paramilitary forces under a army community college scheme navy community college scheme air force community college scheme we are recognizing the training that is being imparted in their training center in the armed forces and we provide the kind of uh, certification that is required for their upward mobility not only in the army but when they complete their services with the armed forces when they come out and look for a job in their post retirement life they will get a job through the certification that is being provided to them uh, by the open university i don't think that in such a massive scale a regular university will be able to serve the indian armed forces in the country similarly when you take uh, the uh, examples of igno community college scheme there are many uh, uh, institutions in the country which cannot award degree neither they can be affiliated to a university uh, for uh, in the form of a college or uh, award of any bachelor degree or master degree because they are providing education in various specialized fields which we call as skill oriented education and 
these igno has a mandate to recognize their skills and to give credit transfer for the skills when they come for a degree course in this university and similarly when you take uh, the example of the method of teaching it's not only uh, your print material which is a internationally uh, standard quality print material it also includes audio video packages in the form of uh, your tv uh, counseling your online counseling your radio counseling all these are done through the electronic media production center which is now uh, under uh, my control and from where all the educational broadcast is going to uh, different parts of the country very recently uh, government of jammu and kashmir has requested us that in this pandemic we are not able to reach our to our students because the internet is not available in the remotest part uh, of the border areas of the country can we use your tv channel and immediately we agreed and provided them the tv channel for imparting education to class 9 class 10 class 11 and class 12 students so the the kind of technology that is being used by the open and distance learning uh, system in this country uh, not only the internet based technology but the satellite based technology are extensively used uh, by by the open university now if you see the pandemic period in this pandemic period there is a convergence all the regular universities are closed colleges are closed uh, due to the lockdown and shutdown so what the teachers have been supposed to do that they will be providing teaching through using the various uh, online platforms that are available that is fine so open universities were using these online platform the regular universities are also using this online platform but the only difference between open and distance learning and regular universities during this pandemic is that open universities are also providing excellent self instructional material in the form of content the regular universities are not providing content to the students they are all only imparting teaching by using the online platform so the idea is that if good quality content is developed by combining the resources of regular universities and open universities and make it what uh, our uh, esteemed uh, panelist uh, professor uh, ravi mahajan was saying that sharing of resources this sharing of resources is very important in this country because everybody is generating resources but nobody is taking the quality of the resources resources and neither anybody is concerned about sharing of the quality resources in the country there is a duplication of generation of resources and many of the resources that are being created are of substandard quality i am not saying that all are substandard but few are substandard and few are not done in a regulated manner so if we combine our resources both resources of regular open and distance learning uh, institutions and a regular method of uh, teaching uh, institutions and prepare quality resources either in the form of e text or in the form of videos or in the form of audios and then repackage it and give it to the learners i think the maximum number of the students uh, in this country will be benefited so time has come this pandemic has taught us this that there has to be sharing of resources it's a matter of concern for open universities in the country also our resources are not being shared properly my friend karamjit ji is struggling to develop courses because he is overnight resources cannot be generated resources have to be quality resources takes time so therefore i was telling him that please use the oer resources and the oer open education resources which are available by the various university i am very happy that baba saheb ambedkar open university has come forward to share its resources with punjab open university 
even i when i was the vice chancellor of odisha state open university i have written him a letter and given him all the open education resources that are available with us and we said that whatever is required from this list you can use it without seeking our permission only thing is just acknowledge that this resource is developed by either the baba saheb ambedkar open university or odisha state open university or by any other open university our acknowledgement is good enough that the original producer of the resources is being recognized is is being acknowledged otherwise it becomes very difficult for a new open university to develop its own resources and then start launching courses i am very happy to see and learn that uh, very soon many certificate courses are going to be uh, uh, launched by the uh, punjab state open university we are all for it and sir let me tell you that if you want to use our studio for developing video programs if you want to use our tv channel for reaching out to your students we are all for it and we are ready for sharing of our resources on behalf of uh, igno authorities i can assure you that whatever best possible help that you expect from igno igno is also ready to provide uh, to uh, punjab state open university so that the students of punjab state open university and the students of india will be benefited out of it i am thankful to you sir and to your esteemed colleagues in punjab state open university for giving me this opportunity of sharing my thoughts with all of you thank you very much thank you sir thank you thank you so much mahapatra sir thank you so much for extending your help your generous help the help of your center and the satellite based other technology uh, that you have offered to us will certainly uh, under karanthi sir's uh, guidance will certainly seek your help sir uh, thank you so much your uh, presentation your lecture was a reservoir of information for all of us sir you highlighted uh, uh, the the four parameters the pillars on which the uh, distance education learning is based and how the optimum use of resources the sharing of the resources has to be done uh, to get the maximum advantage uh, and to reach out to all those uh, students uh, who are otherwise in the uh, living in the remotest parts of the country sir uh, sir we will certainly try to take care of the concerns that you've talked of credibility and quality education we'll try to impart will make our best in uh, uh, dealing with these kinds of issues in our university sir thank you so much mahapatra sir thank, thank you, you. Thank, uh, you. Now, thank you sir thank you now i'd like to request dr anita gill uh, the dean academic affairs of the university to please present a vote of thanks to all the eminent speakers who shared their views with us uh, dr anita gill ma'am please thank you dr gurleen uh today although i knew it before also i am considering myself as well as our university a very lucky one a very fortunate one not only because uh, we have organized this webinar and could uh, get together to listen to the views of what i call the giants in the field of open and distance learning but also because all these have assured us that they would help us to set up a name in our state the name of our university the name of the benefits of open and distance learning i am really very thankful to professor ami upadhyay professor srikant mohapatra professor ravi mahajan i am really very grateful to you that you could uh, uh, spare time for us and not only share your views on the theme of the webinar that we organized today but you also enlightened us uh, uh, taking into consideration the fact that we are still the baby of the family and uh, the baby of the family of open universities there are bound to be teething problems but 
with all your assurances and your valued views i think we are still more confident that we will uh, be a name to reckon with uh, in the name of uh, open universities and provide quality education to all distance education as i say uh, we all uh, i like to go by this saying that distance education is basically reaching the unreachable giving education opportunities as professor ami said going beyond time and beyond space and you know uh, the name of our university the very name on which our university has been set up of guru nanak dev i always considered that uh, guru nanak dev wo was i think the first one who uh, started this concept of distance education the only difference being that he traveled to various places disseminating knowledge uh, amongst people and uh sharing his wisdom and the this university which is set up on his name i think we are uh, doing the same albeit with the help of modern technology i am really very grateful to all of you sir for sparing your time for sharing your views with us and i am thanking you all in advance not only for sharing your views today but for all the help that we are going to take from you in making our university a better one a university who can provide the underprivileged uh, inaccessible students of punjab with higher education i am grateful to you sir thank you so much uh, these series of webinars as well as our university owes a lot to its founder vice chancellor professor karamjeet singh it's a pleasure working under him and no uh, i as i say no task seems difficult under him his enthusiasm makes us all go and work still more apart from him we have a wonderful team uh, we have our registrar dr dharam singh our controller of examination dr bedi and a wonderful wonderful team of faculty members who undertake all the work they take the burden off our heads and work so efficiently that i think we at the top who are sitting there we really don't have to worry much about it i am thankful to my team and last but not the least i am so thankful to all the participants the teachers the researchers the students other guests and luminaries who have attended our webinar and taken the time off to listen to the views and i am sure that with such a large participation the misgivings that are still there regarding open and distance education they will be uh, diminished to a large extent thank you so much sir i am thankful to you all for joining us for obliging us with this event thank you so much Thank you, Anita, ma'am. It's indeed been a pleasure to work under your guidance. We rather have got lot much to learn from you, and we've been learning in this journey. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, with the hope to see you soon, uh, let us all say goodbye and bid adieu to one another. Can there be time for a picture, Dr. Gulleen? Yes, yes, ma'am. Let me take sure. a picture so we can all switch on our videos yes. and take a picture. Yeah. Then please, thank you for reminding them. I would request all of you to please uh, turn on your video so that we can take a picture for the record. Amitot sir. Sure. A request to all the participants to please switch on the videos. It would be a pleasure to see you virtually also. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your patience.
It's great, ma'am. We can continue. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Hope to see you soon. Thank you.